Servus and welcome to Munich. Great that you join us today for our live Q&A. Um, and we have uh, two very special guests. We go out on the water, very fitting to the summer uh, start that officially uh, starts today here in Europe. And uh, we're pleased and very proud to welcome two of our class of 22 members, uh, one uh, calling in from Munich and one calling in from Poland, the European Championships. Uh, great that you both have time for us today. Uh, we call uh, multiple world champion Max Lemke and welcome to European and world champion Oliver Zeidler. Hey guys, what's up? Hello guys. How are you doing? Hey, how are you? Oh, thanks very much for your time, guys. Really appreciate it. We know you have a busy schedule. Uh, Oli, for you, the World Cup is coming up. Uh, Max, uh, for you, you're actually... Wh wh where are you at the moment? Uh, I'm actually in Poland, uh, in Poznan, at the European Championships. And we're waiting for our accreditation. At which is obviously in pandemic times not an easy uh, thing to to get to so i guess there's testing involved everything else uh but i guess you're also looking forward to the competition right yeah it's our test uh, prior to the olympic games so um it's like the last race against the other countries and um try to optimize all little things to go to the last final preparations for the olympics so we're all really looking forward for this last chance to try everything out. And Oli, for you, the preparation is a slightly different. You Basically, your preparation is a, a road of gold throughout every World Cup almost. Uh, uh, gold in last World Cup, next World Cup coming up. What's the plan for that one in Italy? Well, I will try to um, <laughs> achieve a good result again. Um, I don't know if it's enough for another gold medal this time because I had got a few problems with my preparation in the last few few weeks. But uh, yeah, I'm happy that there's a possibility to compete once more before the Olympics. And yeah, that's why I will definitely go to Italy and try my best. Now, we did gather uh, some questions from our audience, uh, from our fans online beforehand, and I'm very happy to dive straight into. I hope that's all right for you guys. Um, so we, ha we got a question from Sophia here for you, Oli. Are you the only athlete practicing uh, at the Munich Regatta, or are there others as well? Well, of course, there are other athletes as well. Also, um, people with canoes, other with rowing boats. So um, I'm definitely not the only one. But uh, from the German team, I'm the only guy who's uh, training in Munich because um, the others um, from my discipline, which is sculling, so with two oars in, um, in um, each hand, uh, so one in each hand, um, the others are training in Hamburg. Um, but um, yeah, I, I didn't like to go to Hamburg. Um, I think I've got better um, training facilities here in Munich and uh, more professional um, yeah, service, uh, for example, my coach or physical therapy, everything else, um, it's more professional here in Munich, so I stayed here. Well, and of course, uh, we from Munich 2022 are very happy that you did actually stay and uh, are a local hero for, uh, for the upcoming uh, home European Championships next year in August. So uh, thanks for staying uh, true to, to home and close to home. Um, you just mentioned, Oli, that there is obviously not only you, but there is a lot of traffic out on the water, um, not only rowers, but also canoe. Um, is, is the water, the boats, is that the only thing you guys have in common, uh, Max, or are there more things that rowers and canoe sprinters has, have in common? Um, I think it's uh, both sports, the training sports, like I think as like in rowing and kayaking, uh, we both have to do lots of kilometers on the water all, all year long. And sometimes it gets a bit boring, but uh, you need to put the work down because otherwise, um, yeah, you don't get a chance. And uh, we are usually the guys that are first out on the uh, out training in the morning and the last ones that finish in the evening. So, yeah. <laughs> I think that's uh, are you saying, that we have in common. 
Are you, okay, so it's both of you. I was just asking, yeah, is, is, yeah. Are, are the canoe sprinters <laughs> getting yeah. up early and coming in late and the rowers are more lunchtime? Yeah, uh, and I'm least, definitely but... not jealous that, uh, that we don't race the 2000. I'm quite happy that we can yeah. 500 meters, <laughs> not 2000. <laughs> I, I can imagine, I can imagine. I mean, having seen our beautiful regatta out at uh, Oberschleißheim, those 2K seem very, very long. And I guess, Oli, um, they get even longer. Like, the closer you get to the finish line, probably it gets long and longer, right? Yeah, it's always uh, uh, very, very um, competitive um, and difficult way down the 2K. Um, and you have to be prepared that it will definitely hurt even after 500 meters sometimes and then you have to pull 1500 more it's not an easy task uh, there is a question from tobias here um what's what what uh, body part hurts first um in I, I think it's the legs um you don't think about um our strong legs uh, if you think about rowing you more think about uh, big upper bodies and big arms but most of the power comes from the legs and and the, uh, and the lower back so you have to be more uh, even stronger in these parts than in your upper body and, and arms there yeah. now it's hard to to see right now because your arms kind of covered but if you look in your instagram profile there seems to be and, and no offense Oli, but there seems to be a slight difference in in arm uh, circumference uh, uh, compared uh, between you and, and, and Max. Is, is it, yeah. can, can we get a, a little uh, comparison, please? Oh, I will lose, <laughs> I think. Uh, here, this guy. Yeah, okay, well, but I think that's very true, right, Max? Uh, you guys, legs are not as important for you guys, but it's more the upper body, right? Uh, it's also like we also use our legs quite a lot like it's the connection between our core and the legs that are quite important so the most power from a good kaika doesn't come out of his arm out of his connection from the body rotation and the legs so that's quite important but i think i also probably have a bit more um i don't know i would say mass because i'm like a short distance <laughs> yeah so i usually do one minute 17 so that's a lot shorter and if i would race like six or seven minutes i think i would look uh, a lot different as well so that's a bit uh, different training style you need to do a lot more cardio i think as a rower than us we do more in the gym and they do more cardio i think if you compare it yeah yeah so sprint versus endurance almost um now now to get up to these these high levels there is a question that might connect quite well here from tom uh, I'm, I'm not sure how, how serious we should take that question, but uh, it, I'm pretty sure it leads us to a different conversation, maybe, Max. Um, Max, do you like to drink coffee? Uh, sorry, I didn't get that the connection was gone a moment. No, no worries. Uh, Tom, Tom Liebscher, actually, I think, one of your team colleagues. I, Max, do you like to drink coffee was his question. Yeah, well, the thing is, I'm the only one, like, I sit in the K4, so we have four guys together, and I'm the only one that drinks coffee, so they always kind of make fun of me that I'm, like, when we are at some town, like, in Poland, I'm always like, oh, let's find a good cafe to have some good coffee or something, and they're like, yeah, whatever, and, yeah, so they li like to make fun of me when it comes to that topic. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, that's that's great. Um, Oli, uh, I know, I think, that, that you're not a coffee guy, but there's a good question, actually, for you here from, from Peter. What's the best pre-workout food? Um, I prefer um, sweet things before um, my workout and also before a competition, so no, nothing with fat, which is very, um, very heavy in the, in the stomach. So... Um, you would try to have a, a lot of carbs, of course, um, and maybe a bit of protein. And that's what I, what I prefer before workout and uh, competition. Max, how is that for you now? Being in Poland, ready for European Championships, what would be your pre-competition food routine? Well, I like to have some oat bars, usually, like um, that are not so sweet, like a bit of sugar as well, but not too sweet. And I usually like to mix some mineral water with some fruit juice, but not too much before competition. And in the breaks, I also like to eat some fruits and oats and sometimes some yogurt to get some proteins. So that's usually I try to um, stay quite basic and not take too many supplements. So I'm try to do it through my um, nutrition in general, not through some kind of supplements, if it's possible. Sometimes 
of course uh, it's not because that sometimes you don't get the food you want when you're at the competition or sometimes you need to be very fast because you don't have time to eat or something so but yeah uh, let, let's make a quick uh, experiment with you two guys if you were to swap um, so fully understanding that you're not super familiar with uh, the other uh, the other sport but at least it's still on the water uh, who would win in a race with Oli in the canoe let's say 500 meters and uh, and Max in, in the rowing boat I think it will be um, we, have, we have tried that difficult uh, oh yeah <laughs> uh, yeah uh, we have tried that a few times with some because... rowers <laughs> yeah, go ahead Max I think my connection is a bit slower than yours, so. <laughs> uh, but I was going to say that we tried that a few times, and I actually think uh, sitting in a rowing boat is a bit easier because you have um, it's wider and you have more stability from the sculls, right? It's called sculls. Yeah. And sitting in a kayak is a lot harder because you don't have the paddle in the water, so you need to do it all from your core, and you don't, can't really um, balance it with pushing the blade or the scull on the water. So we've tried that before, and <laughs> yeah. Only agreeing but with I, that? Um, yeah, I I think it <laughs> won't be a very high class race in, if I um, switch boats. Um, yeah, not for he either. Is in us, a, I think. A skull, but yeah, um, I yeah. think I will I will lose. Yeah. I guess it would still be fun to watch. Um, let, let's quickly come back to the food topic. And maybe um, we should maybe we should try that in, in Munich one day. That yeah. would be fun. Uh, to do. <laughs> hey guys, we're we're fully open for that. It's on for sure. Laura, we'll book it in. All done. Um, we'll just find a spot when you're both in Munich. Uh, very much looking forward to that. That's that's hopefully a good feature in one of our class of 22 episodes. So stay tuned for that. Um, coming quickly back to the food, uh, mainly because that was really something that helped me through the pandemic so far. I guess you don't have the luxury of actually falling back to you know uh, junk food and and, and getting through you through that. Um, but there's a question from Lawrence. Um, apart from your sport, what was your favorite lockdown activity during the the past year? Oli, let's start with you. Okay. Um... Well, I was definitely trying to train um, the same way um, as I wanted to do before um, the competitions in 2020. So um, I I really tried to stay in my in my training rhythm, in my um, life rhythm with working and everything. So there was nothing really special I I tried out um, during the pandemic. And Max, yeah, how think... was that for you? I think in general, as at in the pandemic, we were the government prepare for our dreams all the time. Like we always, mm -hmm. I think we always had the support from the government because they saw our sport as our job, which was really important. So we were able to do our job basically and do the training we wanted to do. So I don't think there was so much difference, but um, of course there was uh, less social life. And you probably grew closer together with your training group because you only saw these guys all the time and basically none of the other friends because you didn't want to kind of danger the training group as well with like a positive um, COVID case. So you really didn't have much other social contact <laughs> um, than all your training buddies. I think it's different for you, maybe, because you train in me in yeah. a big group. And yeah, so that was in the pandemic. Yeah, but I, but I totally understand. So outside rowing, it's it was pretty difficult to meet people and stay in contact. So um, it's pretty much um, the people you are really, really close to uh, where you have still had still contact to. Yeah, totally agree. Okay, so we're not running out of questions, but obviously uh, we still have a bit of time and anybody who's watching us at the moment on Facebook and, and YouTube and the live stream, please feel free to leave uh, your questions in the comments. Um, so we're happy to answer a few more. We do have some uh, that are still here in our uh, collection, in our uh, pool of questions that we had. Um, that's a very, well, we just talked about training. How many training sessions do you actually have per week? Like how much, you know, hours, how many hours do you spend on the water, uh, Max? Um, for us, it depends a bit uh, between low and high intensity weeks, like between training camps training. 
but it's like if you just count, count the training like without preparation and without cool down warm up etc or physiotherapy and stuff it's between like 22 or 26 hours i think a week if you count the raw training but there's a lot more an athlete has to do <laughs> than the raw training yeah. hours so yeah and if we compare that to you Oli, how, how, how does that compare roughly uh, it's pretty similar. A normal mm. rowing session takes about one and a half to two hours for me. And then you have it eight times on the water. And beside that, you have got a lot of physical therapy. You have got uh, weightlifting. You do some cross training like running or um, bicycling. This is uh, what I do. So I think I, um, I have about 26 to 28 hours. Um, it's pretty comparable to what Max said. And but then, is it like you have the comparison that that's something I'm interested in because I always imagined swimming like you were a swimmer before you were raw, yeah. right? That's I heard from your story. And do you think rowing training is a lot more interesting that you see things or is it how how does that compare <laughs> the training? Well, it's definitely more beautiful than just um, seeing the, the ground of the of the pool. Um, yeah, that's what I thought. Um, so it's uh, definitely more interesting too, yes. <laughs> And yeah. um, it was even more uh, more hours in the pool actually than I have um, on the water now. So um, it became um, yeah even more interesting be because you can focus more in this few hours on the boat uh, compared to swimming, where you sometimes train three times a week, uh, three times a day um, in the pool and always see the same things. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll yeah. stay in the pool with you for a quick bit um, because that, that is actually a good question. So it's, with swimming, it's quite easy to you know, keep on track. You see the line uh, down on the floor. You also have the lines at each side. But there is a question here from Lisa, um, and she asks, how do rowers actually know they are on the right track and not hitting into a canoe sprinter that's you know, coming back on the other side? They usually yeah, have, a, I heard they usually have a mirror on the left and right side. <laughs> yeah that, that's what that's what old men have um i normally don't have that um well we have got the boys in the uh, uh which uh yeah form lanes for us so we stay in this lane and normally we have got something like a um like a, a training system um or a, a traffic system which means um, rowers have to go on one side up on the other side down and uh, canoes who or our kayaks who see where they go because we don't see where we go because we go backwards um, they um, see us then and then they can um, go around us so um, this is actually the thing and it's this for safety reasons of course and, and I guess uh, just be being curious because the speed you have on the water is, is quite high both of you um, a, a crash would be well, not good for the boats, for sure, not good for the material, but also potentially dangerous for, for both of you. Is, is it something that ever happened to you guys, uh, Maxi? Uh, it happened to, like, when we were training, I think, in Australia on the Regatta course, it uh, happened to one of my training buddies. And he was quite furious because what was going on the wrong side as well. So he basically hit us from behind when we were pedaling <laughs> forward. So there was no chance that we see him as well. And... There was um, quite a bit of, um, I don't know, disagreement between both sides. <laughs> it's usually the case. <laughs> Everyone thinks they're right. So, but uh, usually it's a system that we um, avoid collision, collisions between kayakers and rowers. But yeah, it happens from time to time. But of course, it's not a um, nice thing. And it can like hurt a lot since we have sometimes have speeds between 20 or 25. To, yeah. Uh, I can imagine. Um, now, we, we talked a lot about the, your, your venue, the regatta, um, and we have a quite beautiful one here from the 72 Olympic Games, which is still quite a beauty, though it aged a bit. Oli, you see that every day. Uh, does it automatically also, and this is a question here from Peter, does it all, uh, automatically make it the most beautiful uh, course out there for you, or do you have other favorites? Um, well, I pretty like the regatta course here in Munich because of the clear water and um, yeah, it, it's nice to be there. That's why I enjoy training on this course a lot. 
but um, there are also other diff uh, other very beautiful um, rowing venues in the world. For example, Lucerne, which is my personal favorite, where I just went uh, two weeks ago. Um, yeah, this is this is my my personal favorite, but um, the regatta course in Munich is pretty close behind. Um, Max, now you you can. Uh, correct that wrong, of course, and you can jump in here from Munich. Uh, well, what's what's your yeah, favorite I, course? I also I also <laughs> like Munich. Um, it's a good course, and we um, we do training camps there from time to time. Like uh, usually, sometimes before even before the World Championships, so it's really nice. But of course, there's a lot of other nice places as well. But I think in Germany, for sure, it's um, the nicest course we have. I would say. Yeah because of the clear water and the atmosphere around it and usually in the summer it's quite packed and people like to go around there have a good time there's a nice beach bar behind the or used to be a nice beach bar i don't know if it's still there behind the <laughs> um dance so there's yeah it's cool yeah i we really like being there it is actually still there and uh, uh we will make sure that it stays there in, in one way or another uh, obviously for August 2022 for you guys to celebrate hopefully your medals then. Mm, talking a little bit about that, let's, let's time travel to August 2022. Uh, you both will be, uh, fingers crossed, competing on that uh, beautiful course. Uh, this is a question here from Pascal. What are your goals for, for Munich 2022? What do you want to come away with, uh, Oli? Well, it's a pretty special event for me because um, in 1972, my grandfather won Olympic gold um, at this course. And this will be my first international regatta on the Munich course, my my personal living room, as I call it. <laughs> um, so uh, my goal is definitely to win a gold medal, just as my grandfather did. And yeah, close the circle then. Max, you're aiming that high as well? Yeah, I think uh, I'm doing K4 at the moment for the Olympic Games this year, and I'm trying. I think I'm trying to get into the K1 next year. So uh, hopefully, get a medal in the K1 there. And it's a bit uh, gonna be a bit longer race for me because I will switch to 1,000 meters from 200. So there's gonna be lots of training ahead. But I'm also looking forward that we finally have a um, big international sport event in Germany again. And I think it's cool to be at home and have all the all our um, friends and family probably there in Munich because it's not so far away. And yes, I'm really looking forward to the atmosphere there in general. Max, you just mentioned switching from K4 to K1 uh, from, from the team. There is a question for Oli here, uh, who is usually uh, alone on the water. Uh, Vera asks, are you considering trying team rowing as well? Or will you stay in your single boat as long as you can? Well, um, I am. I'm free for um, yeah collaborations. I would say um, if there is someone who um, is really willing to um, build a double or another boat with me, I, I would be open for that. But um, as long as I am that competitive um, in the single, I will try to stay in the single as long as possible. Because uh, yeah, this is I really love what I do. I really love the uh, connection between the other single scholars. It's a bit of a um, exclusive club in rowing uh, with the single scholars. So um, I'll try to try to stay there as long as possible. Well, I hope that was actually a question concerning rowing and not your relationship status. I'm not 100% sure if, if it was referring actually to rowing, but I guess. So let's let's leave it as a, a, at that. Mm. Uh, she also asks, uh, maybe that, well, well, maybe in that connection, it does make more sense. How long are you actually planning on staying a professional rower, Oli? Well, I will definitely go um, until 2024 um, for the next Olympics. So to finally have the Olympic experience we all hope for for Tokyo already, but the which will not happen now. Um, and then I will see how, how life is going. And yeah, this is, this is more... Um, I will be more flexible, I think, um, with my decisions after 2024. But it's a pretty fixed thing that I will stay in the in the boat for the next uh, four years. Yeah. Max, uh, how long is your career uh, outlook at the moment? 
Uh, I think it's the same. I'm uh, for sure. I'm going to um, try to go to the Olympics 2024. So that's uh, the next goal after <laughs> this Olympics. Because since it's only three years, it would be a waste of time to and uh, not do it anyway. So <laughs> it's a shorter uh, term now, and we already invested the work for this year. So um, if you see it from that perspective, also um, you should definitely consider doing it. But I think I would probably even do longer. And uh, I was thinking of even maybe. Trying another sport after 2024 again in on a professional level, but no idea which sport and how this is gonna work out. <laughs> but I, I was about to ask. Well, so so uh, so there's um, um, a good um, how do you say a good idol for doing it. So yeah. <laughs> Sorry. What, what, yeah. Well, rowing, of course. Yeah, but but what, what's no, what, no, what, I, don't I mean, mean like rowing. I mean like switching sports. And oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. I, don't, well, I don't really consider rowing. Uh, I, I think I'm way too short for that. And, <laughs> so. well, well, what do you? But there must be something in the mix. It can't be the whole wide world out there. Uh, we have nine sports here at Munich 2022. Is there any of the sports would but that potentially be in the mix? I, I, don't really, know, I really table don't know tennis. Yet. I just, I just feel like, um, like giving the challenge uh, all this time, which you do in the same sport, which I would be looking for. <laughs> okay. Like it's <laughs> well, keep us updated, please, because uh, we're very keen on, on on seeing how that develops and what you choose for uh, potentially. Uh, you mentioned challenge. Obviously, it's a challenge for everybody at the moment, especially for you guys. Um, but uh, Tokyo, the um, Olympic Games, is on the horizon, and then beyond that, the European Championships here in Munich. Uh, hopefully, with uh, not a lot of impact by the pandemic. But there is a question from, from John now for Tokyo. Uh, do you have any concerns about going to uh, Tokyo uh, during this uh, uh, difficult time? Oli, is, what, what's your thought on this? Um, well, you hear a lot of things on the media, of course, but um, as an athlete, you have to um, yeah, keep calm, I think, because uh, if you always think about this will not happen, you don't get the extra percent you need to do to win a medal in the end. So, and this is what we all aim for. So, um, for, for for myself, um, I'm pretty calm about that and I'm not concerned about going to Tokyo. Um, if you look at the numbers of infections, um, I think we would uh, be very happy here in Germany to have these low um, infection rates. So um, I'm pretty, I'm pretty yeah, relaxed about the situation. And um, I have, of course, I hope that the Olympics will happen this year. Max, your take on that? Yeah, this, I think uh, I think the same. I think probably taking the public transport in Germany is more dangerous than flying to the Olympics with all the um, precautions in place. Like there's so many um, tests and so many things you need to do before you enter. And we already had two international World Cups already with zero COVID cases and kayaking. So I'm quite convinced that it's, um, there's going to be a, um, a safe safe environment for us. And I'm not concerned at all that it's going to be happening at the moment. But news, as you said, um, say something else. But I think it's a general... Um, like everyone is tired from this pandemic and i think all most of the people are uh, i understand that they're quite negative towards events like this because it's been a long time but um, i think that would be the case with a lot of things that would be happening at the moment so yeah yeah and just imagine i mean this is all now now we're still in it but imagine you know having people again together in in our venues out at the regatta course cheering you on uh, I, I, well, I personally can't wait for that. I guess you guys as well uh, to, to get back to maybe a new normal, but still a, a more normal way of, of enjoying the sport and, 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 and competing. Is that actually something, and this uh, might be a, a good question to close on uh, because we're almost uh, up with time. Uh, do you actually, when you compete and out on the water, do you actually hear, see what's around you? Oli, is, 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 can you hear the fans from, uh, from the outside? Yes, maybe I can um, start with the experience of the World Cup 1 this year in Zagreb, in, in Croatia. Um, I was in the final with, a, with the Croatian local hero. And we had so many fans uh, down the course um, cheering us on. And I, I, I really didn't um, 
I realized that I really missed all the voice um, around the regatta course during a race. But in this moment, I really heard every single voice and it was it was so cool to race um, in front of public. And I'm really looking forward and hope that in Munich we will have a full grandstand uh, cheering us. And yeah, I really can't wait that uh, we will have a new new normal yeah, again. And Max, I guess in uh, Poland, where you're now at the moment, will there be any spectators? Um, I think here not, but we have um, the finals uh, weekend in Duisburg, which is like the championships from all kinds of. And there's actually gonna like Duisburg on the regatta course. We're actually gonna have 500. They're gonna be allowed. Like they changed this, I think, this week. So this is gonna be the first competition spectators. And of course, it's um, all, you hear the spectators. Like we start on the 500 meter line, and usually the grandstands go up to like 200 or 250 meters, and you really can hear all the, all the noise and all the emotions. Like, like you don't hear anything in particular, but you hear that it gets really loud, and that gives you, I think, the last push for the last 150 meters or something. And yeah, it's really good, and we really need the spectators as well. Otherwise, it's quite weird to race. Like. We, I, like we had the experience at the last World Cup, you hear like basically except the coaches, even in the live streams, that they scream your stroke rates or something. So that's definitely quite weird. And uh, I think we're all looking forward to having spectators again. Yeah, nobody really wants to hear the coaches or only the coaches shouting. So <laughs> we'll make sure in Munich you can't hear your coaches. Uh, we haven't started with the ticketing yet, but um, make sure that, that you sign up on Munich 2022 dot com for our newsletter so you can't miss when we start with the ticketing so that these two guys and all our other athletes get the support they deserve and they need um, and with that we say thanks very much for being with us today thanks very much Oli thanks very much uh, Max all the best for you too all the best for the World Cup all the best for the European Championships and we look very much forward to seeing you in one of our class of 22 episodes or of course competing then here in Munich in August next year. Thanks for your time. Have a great one. And uh, we have our next live Q&A. I should mention that in July. I don't have the exact date. Um, one, two, three, four, 7th of July. 7th of July. Uh, brilliant guests. Stay tuned on our social media channels and you'll know more uh, very, very soon. Oli, Max, everybody, thanks very much and servus from Munich. Thanks.